view is uh, warehouse. Uh, my project and my research is about warehouse common issues. Uh, and I have to find this uh, warehouse common issues in this company. They have, do they have this uh, issues in the warehouses or still house or not? Uh, well, uh, let my uh, case studies uh, and articles I read. Uh, I found insufficient warehouse space and slow booking process, inaccuracy, damage, training, and product identification. And I started uh, search in this company about these issues uh, in their warehouses. Um, uh, they're optimized uh, inventory management. They use um, just-in-time uh, management system. They eliminate unnecessary activities and they what you call the supplier deliver um, the products on time. This is the department uh, structure. I was mainly uh, cooperative with um, operations, uh, the main operations. Uh, what do they do? How do they manage their uh, Main operations and uh, their main supply chain branch is in Egypt. This is linked with the previous one. So op operations, they they usually contact um, the production planning department in uh, Egypt. What sort of products come to Egypt and what sort of products go? When the trailer come from the manufacturer, it's filled with one, one, with one type, you know, five liters, uh, 1,080 carton, or, or five liters, or 60 milli, uh, 600 milli, this uh, summer. But the, uh, the truck's capacity, they don't fill it with uh, 360 of only five, uh, five liters. Sometimes demand or depends on the, on the demand of uh, the customer. Maybe the customer wants 50 carton of this, of uh, 5 liters, or and 20 carton of 60 million. It depends on the demand. For managing inventory, actually the store capacity, they have two warehouses here in the DC, two big warehouses. Uh, it's uh, cover about 180,000 carton of water. And the daily sales is from 8,000 carton to 10,000 carton for uh, generally talking about all the classes. In the, in the summer season, no, this number jump to 16,000 carton to 18,000 carton. And for the inventory, every store, uh, all the storekeepers are responsible for checking the item physically and balanced with the, what is written on the system. They are responsible to check that and to make sure it's correct every day. But at the end of the month, there are sections there called accounting, accounting department. They are responsible there to check all the bills and compare it with the, what, what is in the, in the system. At the end of the month, the inventory report will be sent to the headquarters there in high. You see all the inventory. What kind of bullet does the military company need to carry and buy? He said carton bullet because it's easy to handle and the cost of money is less and also get more space inside the container even if order more volume of uh, Again, the plastic and wood because it's cost, it's cost and also didn't get more space inside the container. Also, this use a specific uh, forklift to move the pallet. Okay, this is the picture. Uh, specific forklift. Second question is what is the best way to avoid humidity damage? Uh, the manager said the products will be inside the warehouse and the warehouse covered with a foundation, and most of the warehouses are covered with the foundations to avoid the humidity. Uh, to avoid the humidity and the damage of the furniture. Third question is, can IKEA use polishes on furniture? Actually, suppliers they did the polishes on the 
furnitures and make it ready to sell for IKEA. Just why? IKEA they don't polish the furnitures. Why? Because it's difficult when we re when they receive the products from the supplier. It's difficult to open the packages and uh, then polishes and again repackage the product because this will really cost them time, will cost them money for polishes, for tools, um, for hiring people. So it's uh, received from the suppliers to the to sell, and the uh, polishes will turn from the supplier. In minimizing the effect, they start from warehousing department. If warehouse the warehousing department they receive any material, uh, they uh, they send the receipt for that material to quality control department, or they uh, when they put it in the system, it will be automatically sent to quality control department. So quality control department will come to warehouse and check and uh, make inspection to check if this item is uh, matching the the standards. Uh, they have or not. So if it's not, they will approve it. Then automatically, for protection department, they will know, uh, you know we have this product uh, on the warehouse. Otherwise, if they didn't approve it, the protection department will will never know uh, this. Uh, you know, will never know uh, that uh, uh, warehouse department receive any material. Uh, so they they uh, they use this strategy in warehouse department. Because they know if if production department knows that there is this material in the warehouse, they might take it and use it, and it's all, uh, it's not specified. Okay. What's the process of uh, picking an order? First of all, the PO will be received in the the, in, in the organization or in the system. Then, uh, after that, uh, one employee has to make sure that if, if this order is uh, available in the, in the inventory or, or not. If it's av available, they will immediately print the pick list, which I will, inshallah, uh, show you later, inshallah. I will show you a sample of this pick list. If, if the order, the items, are not um, available in the warehouse, then this employee has to order uh, the quantity, the enough quantity for even this order or any uh, other order. Here we have a sample of the customer booking list. This is uh, this is in, in, in general, this is the booking list. We have the, the item number and we have uh, many other uh, components of, of uh, which, which describe the item that uh, have to be uh, over. I will uh, dis uh, discuss it inshallah in detail. The name is Nadik, stands for uh, National Agriculture Development uh, Company. Is one of the largest company uh, of agriculture and uh, food processing share uh, share stock companies in the Middle East and North Africa. It's established in 1981, and the activities of this company has two activities: Nadi Food and Nadi Agriculture. Nadi Food, uh, the company, is uh, one of the leading food and beverage companies, and uh, Nadi Agriculture. One of the most important activities conducted by land is agriculture. Uh, for example, uh, the company planted the onion and potatoes. Talk about inspection. I'm just gonna again my topic quality management. Okay. So first, we're we'll gonna talk about inspection. There are kinds of inspection, but what I saw from the Korean company, they use this continuous inspection. What it means that from the production line itself, the inspector comes and pick the juice and go to the lab and test it. 
but in his case he takes two samples per hour two samples and per hour from the same juice you can eat for example lemon if you're talking about lemon means you're gonna come and take two bottles of lemon juices and and take it for every hour. hour yes every hour but the thing <laughs> then I ask how much time it takes to uh, uh, do the testing and there are two kinds of tests involved in their uh, lab there's microbiological uh, testing and chemical testing in the, the these tests are done depending on the material you use if you use orange juice Microbiological test, and other than it depends on the material and the use. When, uh, when they receive the, the raw material from the supplier, they conduct an inspection before it's entered to production line. Uh, what we call, we talked before with the quality, quality control, it's called pre production inspection. And uh, how you can control the defects that happen in this stage. Basically, if you want to control the defects, you have to do more inspection. For example, uh, we took the first example with the raw material. Then, for example, if uh, they want to mix the, the material together to make juices or something, they must do inspection after they mix the material. Even uh, uh, if they uh, bought this material in tanks, they must do inspection to enter the production line. As what uh, Daniel mentioned, they use continual inspection. They take it from the samples from the production line and do inspection. The standards, they follow a lot of standards. They follow first of all the international standard, like uh, uh, ADR Europe. It's uh, the Arabian Agreement uh, uh, concerning of uh, concerning an international carriage uh, of a dangerous good by the road. And they have the law built by the government in the Saudi Arabia Standardization Organization. And also the customer like Aramco and Sabic, they usually enforce some, their subcontractor in some specification like the, I mentioned the aluminum <coughs> tanks, because they usually use steel one, but for special chemicals by Sabic and Aramco, they, they enforce they enforce the supplier, the subcontractor, to have a special aluminum tankers for their fleets. And MSI also has their own standard. Like they take from the international standard and from their experience by producing by the time and from the customer also. Inspection, tests, and types. So, in the first, we have the visual inspection. Uh, I'll just give you a basic example. Uh, we have picture for for it here as well. So, in, uh, visual inspection is basically, let's say that we have these two steel beams, you know, in the flat bed trailer, there are two main steel beams. So, they will see the cutting that are being done on that steel beam as well as the welding. So, the inspector will be standing next to the welder and he's checking and making sure is the welding being done correctly or is the cutting being done correctly as well. Next one comes is the destructive testing. This basically is in new product development, a prototype. When you're building a prototype trailer or a tanker, so they will push the product to its limit until it breaks. So this is destructive. Okay, uh, today, uh, we will talk about safety in transportation now. What is safety in transportation? Safety in transportation is one of or part of uh, the company that's mean uh, it's important thing in the company. That's mean uh, uh, if you have good safety in transportation or any department, you have good safety, you will uh, uh, minimize the number of incidents. If the number of incidents will increase, that's mean the cost will increase also, you know. Incident means money, pay for everything. Okay, and also uh, if you have good safety, that's mean number of incidents will decrease. If number of incidents will decrease, you will keep the price for insurance at the same level. If you have incident, the, the insurance price will increase. Also. Uh, and also name of the company, company registration. Uh, that's mean uh, the company, if, if the company have incident or accident, that means the logo or the name of the company will decrease. And also, uh, the, the main the, the main partner with the company is Aramco. 
and in our country they are focused on safety. If they have any incident or something, maybe they will lose some contacts. They are sensitive items, but I mean sensitive items. Some items since the need has special handling, like the vehicle discover vehicle, like bridge or like this. This is a hard to uh, special type of truck, and special also the road and the then the, the same. But this is a uh, brought uh, from the, uh, the uh, company, not from the company. Special handle. There is what I mean by special handle. I think there is big items like this. This items it's need a special track and if you see it's not here, but there is a special uh, well, yeah. kind of type. And this tire, this type of item not allowed to move uh, as any time. Should be put schedule, make sure the road is screw safe and make sure make the Uh, eight and 28, the Somali government uh, had a problem. They lose 450 million uh, because they illegally uh, fishing. Uh, this is uh, help the Somali piracy to expand uh, over the sea. And the last thing, uh, where does the crime take place? Here, here is the picture. Uh, in uh, 2005, there, there was nearby the, the country, and uh, when it uh, goes down to 2005, 8, 9, to 10, they expand. Even they reach to Oman and uh, the Yemen and the uh, little Arab. The sales uh, actually so big. Uh, this is the founder and managing director. It talks about three important points. Uh, the first one using uh, using intelligent technology, and so that uh, he developed uh, multi language uh, and multi currency. And uh, he, he believes that the, uh, each company uh, has uh, each company must have the fleet management system. And third point. The idea is to increase the visibility and reduce it. The idea from this uh, system to uh, increase the visibility and uh, reduce cost. And uh, including to this point, <coughs> it started in 1961, and it's the largest humanitarian organization and UNS front line to the fight against the global hunger. Who is Sajid? The Sajid is a former Air Force pilot from Iraq, a regional, regional safety aviation officer. And the WFB say the virus at yours, and the Sajid explained it, because we are, we are working in difficult places. There is no, there is no not only bad terrain, but also bad security. So he said the virus had used. Disasters. The WFP faced many two types faced two types of disasters when transporting enough food to eat. Beside these disasters, WFP will fly, ship and drive stuff and medical supplies to those in the about uh government Hassan company, which is uh Qatari uh Qatar shareholding company work to provide uh, digital logistics uh, services. Uh, we'll talk about uh, their uh, background. Established in uh, 2004, and uh, it runs uh, the fastest growing company in the logistics. And the second 
uh, growing company in the country. So it decided by uh, the International Business Times in New York. So this company began with uh, just one 4,000 square meter warehouse, and now it has uh, a different facilities in different locations, six different locations. As we said, they are ranked as the fastest growing company in uh, logistics. Their projects, uh, they work in a high, um, in a huge uh, project, which is located in a new industrial area. It's close to Doha International Airport. And uh, the new sea, uh, Doha Sea. Yeah, as you know, it's located in UAE. It's the Middle East number one port. And uh, it's the largest shipping port in the Middle East. It runs the nine uh, largest uh, port in the world. Jabal Ali is a very massive port, and this is led to be uh, helped it to be capable to handle any uh, type of vessels. Capacity compared between 12,500 to 14,500. So Rory back, uh, Rory back. He is the senior manager of Bahrain Carrier Gulf Air. He um, he what do you call? He uh, determines that fortunately we operate an international network where one region's result can balance some weaker performance at elsewhere. So uh, the connection between uh, the Middle East, Asia, and Europe. So if <laughs> Europe like has some uh, what do you call? If the consumer demand is low, it can affect some of the freight forwarding businesses in the Middle East. So neither Schultz nor Black, they dismiss that this uh, 2012 is going to be a difficult year. They're going to look at it from a positive outlook perspective. Here, there are several risk uh, market factors. There are low demand rates from Asia to Europe. And um, they reduce supplies uh, due to the challenging uh, business uh, expectations uh, going on. presentation on logistics automation so first thing what is automation um, a warehouse that has an equipment an automatic equipment it's completely covered fully automatic and there's another kind of automation you call semi-automation but that in semi-automation there's people and machine but in here we're talking about complete automatic stuff in here. so first thing in, uh, when you talk about things you see about the traditional views people what comes in your mind in when you think about logistics, people. It's the thing that the uh, logistics made up of a people system. But we think in the present logistics, now in the, the, as the technology has increased so much, all the tools now you will find is autom automated tools. And completely automatic, starting from dispatching, picking, loading, moving in the production and everything. In 2010, Agility Company uh, has had to deal with many issues and many challenges. Like, first of all, the legal dis dispute between Agility Company and the military, US military. Other issue, another issue was the unexpected effect and impact of uh, Arab Spring on Agility. Even with, the, with these issues, uh, agility was able and was still going ahead in expansion its businesses. Okay. Uh, the next year, 
which is 2011, started off many issues. Started with unrest, political unrest erupting in Tunisia, uh, and the toppling of the president who was uh, Zain al-Abdin Ali, and this uh, caused political unrest er uh, erupting for to spread across the, uh, the region. Uh, so uh, Yemen to uh, Oman, Bahrain, and. January 2012, this company, subsidiary of E8, this says that it will have converted 171 aircraft globally. Okay, it is not showing us the figure for just Middle Eastern market anymore. And offers, you know, we we will look at what are their uh, what do you call what do they provide the services? They provide user friendly services. Their main benefit is that. Not only will they like offer you uh, the service to convert your airplane, at the same time they will offer you services to upgrade your uh, your uh, old aircraft stacks like you buy it as a second hand. So you need to put some new technologies in it as the time goes on, right? So they also do maintenance and upgrades at the same time as they do the conversion. Okay? 